So I'll call our select board meeting to order. It's 6.01 on August 5th. And uh, our, our select board meeting as usual is being taped by Dan from FCAT uh, for viewing soon in the future. When it gets put up on our FCAT media channel, and if you're watching this from home, you know how to find FCAT and FCAT Media. So we'll start off by approving the minutes from last, uh, from two weeks ago, our last meeting. Did, we, did you read the minutes? Yes. Uh, I had a, what I would guess is a request for a small change. Not very difficult, but down here where you asked for a change to the time of the election or the time that we have a transition for a school committee. I think that was just and to make sure that there's someone at that month's meeting in case the other person hadn't s sworn in yet. So, so this just said to avoid a conflict with a regular yeah, that's true. meeting. But, but it seemed like a, more of an explanation was good. I mean, I thought that you were doing that so that we wouldn't have a period of time when there was when we were missing a school board member. That is precisely accurate. Um, w w and I wanted that, I just thought we, if we could have the minutes reflect that explanation. That, that makes sense? Um, yeah. Because I thought, that, you know, that's a, that's a real issue that, need, that needed to get solved. Okay. Yeah, I agree. So we'll amend it that way. And that so, so, so what, what is the language you would like? Um, I guess I would say that Phil asked that the date of the appointment, which is in here, or the, the end the date of the appointment, appointment, the end date of the appointment. End date of the appointment, not the election. Right. All right. Be okay. either the date of the election or the date of the last uh, 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 regularly scheduled meeting of that month. Right. Whichever is necessary to maintain a full complement of school committee members. Yeah, great. You gotta make sure she got that. Yeah, I didn't get that. <laughs> so, so basically the same sentence that we have here, but at the end with the regularly scheduled school committee meeting, and right now it ends in a period, to say, um, to, to maintain a full complement of school committee members. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. So with that change, yeah, good. Uh, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes? Yes. Second. 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 Aye. Okay. Excellent. Um, we have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for 207390 and change. We have a payroll warrant for 86810 and change. And we have a payroll deduction warrant for 21,696 and change. So can I have a motion to accept uh, the warrants? Yes, sure. So, uh, so all in favor, aye? Yes. Aye. <laughs> Great. Okay. I'll, I'll take it the, uh, the other thing was, the amendment to the minutes was also voted on. Was voted on. on. Yes. Yes, yes. Well, definitely. Well, make it so so meetings attended by select board members um, just had a telephone conversation with the superintendent we do have our first state mediation scheduled um, for, for our uh, teachers union so that's that's a good thing but they're uh, apparently the governor the governor's last budget cut that department way back they're they're bunch of retirements of mediators instead of three mediators in our area there's only one um, and uh, so this promises to be even more long long distance duration drawn out than or it has that potential just because scheduling the thing was so hard but we got a September Thursday September 5th I think great so that's it so about two weeks ago I had a Conservation Commission meeting um, I would guess that, you know, 
The most important thing was we actually finished approving the shed that's going to be built for the baseball field. So that's it's now they're ready to. After after we sign off all the paperwork, then then the state has about ten days for them to look at the paperwork and make sure we did it correctly. So that's now passed, and so I assume that uh, it it can get installed. Okay. Public comment. Uh, oh. a, a question about uh, your membership on the Conser Conservation Commission. Right now, you are one of five. Is that not true? I'm one of five. And they have five slots. Yes. And the reason that you joined was because they were having trouble making quorum. Um, are you looking for another member of the Conservation Commission so that you can uh, bow out? If someone came along, I mean, Bruton is interested, yes. So if somebody would okay. like to join the Conservation Commission. Okay, just checking on yep, your Yeah, yeah, and then I could there. not, I don't have to do it. Um, there was a hope that because I started with the Nexian project, and that was a big project, mm. that I would say to the end, now we've really finished our part of it now. So mm -hmm. now it's sort of, you know, easier for me to, to bow out. Okay. So. Good point. Thank you. We're looking for people on the Conservation Commission. We're also looking for people on the Ag Commission. And Parks and Rec. And more. And more. And yes. Oh, no. Okay, just got the last one. So back public comments. I think we don't have any public comments. We did receive two public comments today. Okay. Um, I only bring it up just because they were from people with completely op diametrically opposite political points of view, and yet they commented with the same complaint, which I found fascinating. Um, and and that is that the, the work that um, Ron Sweet did on the South River Meadows, I guess, new possible parking area, or the enlargement of a possible parking area, the flattening out that he did. They, that he's doing right now, or the, right, or, yeah, right. That the complaint was that he that they also clear cut like a half an acre of animal habitat, and people didn't understand why. And the one person was very upset that a healthy tree, adult maple or whatever tree, was cut down, and the other person was ha was upset that uh, habitat for his hunting on Pine Hill, the the for the varmints that the things that he hunts, whatever was destroyed. Not so. Two different people were upset at the extent of the clear cut that was going on. That's on Pine Hill? No, on at the, at the South River Meadows, like the Rose former Rose Cornfield or whatever people call it. But the second one you mentioned you said Pine Hill. That that was the nature of the person's complaint. He hunts deer. Oh he hunts deer up on Pine Hill and or whatever he hunt I don't know, bear I but Ron I, I don't want to that. Uh, no, no, but he hunt, but the habit, the habitat for little critters that go down and drink water is something that, that was the, the habitat that he cut was the stuff, was the one that was contiguous to the woods across the street that all the animals travel through the woods to come down for water. And that so was the, that was the stuff. Did, that was did you cut. suggest that they contact him for an explanation? No. That would be a good thing to do before, because there's, there's nothing really to do except refer it if you, if they wanted to refer it to actually get an explanation, um, they might want to do that. Other, otherwise, it's a kind yeah. of an unanswerable complaint in a public forum, which I'm sure we don't want to subject our department heads to <laughs> without uh, yeah. some background and some explanation uh, being available when we when we uh, bring it up for public discussion. Yeah, I know that that committee had something to do with the open, sp whatever, the open space, space committee, committee yeah. mm -hmm. has something, it has a plan. And yeah, they're, I mean, they're, I, they're working I don't, together. I don't imagine Ron. Ron Sweet did that uh, by himself, whatever. Just, well, do, do tell people who have those kinds of concerns that they really should be contacting the people who are the subject of their Call concerns. Ron or call the open space committee. Or, or me. Or, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're, we don't have to leave them hanging. That was I don't the, know what's going on at Pine Hill, though. But nothing. I'll, I'll let that go. Yeah, that's another. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. So old business. So we're waiting for Gary. Gary's but, here. Beth and Gary come in. Come on in, Gary. Yeah. Gary. Hi, Hi, Gary. 
Have a seat. So we have two estimates from you. Yes, sir. Will it tell us about them? Do you want a copy of them? Sure. Okay, the latest um, construction is uh, the guy's going to let me work with him. And um, he's the only one that will let me work with him. Uh, and I guess his estimate speaks for itself. Yeah. Well, I didn't, I mean, I, 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 I'm looking at the estimate, Gary, and I, like, to me, um, like, it, it was, to me, this is like approaching, like, real money. Right. I, I mean, I, oh, yeah. Um, and so it's like one thing to make someone whole again after a fire or disaster, mm -hmm. um, but it's another thing to do, and I'm not suggesting anything, but it, it's, it's I, I don't know electric anything, I don't know, oh, but it's like another thing to do home repairs that are independent of a, a, a disaster. And so like to, when I look at stuff like this, I, I mean, I, I can't tell like what's from a fire, what's not from, a, what's just like a good idea, whether, whatever. So I, um, but in general, this is like approaching or exceeding the limits of my comfort zone in terms of like acting without a policy and without, um, a, a background, like, um, not a background, but like, without a sense of like how to treat everybody similarly situated. So I, it, it was one thing when we were doing small amounts, but this is real. And I don't know, I don't know what's from the fire, what's not. I don't know what's appropriate in terms of like the policy. And, and I, I was, it's been a while now since we talked about making a policy and what, has there uh, been any movement on it? And I, I think um, some prefer uh, flexibility in an approach and everything on a case-by-case -case basis. And so... Uh, Who we, prefers that? Well, we haven't... Um, that's, I think, one reason. I, I don't think... Um, I don't know that I've ever been directed to propose a policy or that you have ever discussed what such a policy might look like. Um, I, I, I had the same feeling, times. but more, more about the electrical work than about uh, the other one, at least. Uh, you know, were the sills damaged, which they yes. could have been damaged I in the fire. Um, you, you know, the, 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 the clabbers and the sheathing, I, I assume these were damaged in the fire. Yes, this contractor, Scott Hall, and I met with the building inspector, and he went over everything with us, what needed to be done, because I didn't want to uh, do it twice. So he told us exactly what he needed, and um, the contractor was there, and so nothing will be done that isn't needed to pass his inspection. But that's a different issue than what had, what was damaged in the fire. You, you know, in other words, my I lost my was, whole we box. Were, I lost my whole control box. I lost all my panels. Yes, that's, but that's what we worked, that's what you, we gave you money for last time. That right? was for temporary power uh -huh. to get me through until I can get uh, my house put back together electrically. That's just temporary power. That box will be used in my house. The one that's for temporary, that, yeah, that will yeah. be going in my house. Right, right. Um, there's nothing added to this that isn't from the fire. I mean, they're gonna try to t tap into the knob and tube where they can, if they can. Um, so this, uh, if this you go by my house and look, the, uh, the no, burnt no, no, electrical no. box it, is sitting right outside. So, so this is not a complete rewiring of your house, that's what you're saying? It's, it's just um, whatever's needed from the fire damage. And, is, and the same is true with the carpentry? Absolutely. Okay. And the only other thing that we've talked about, uh, and maybe when you were here too, I think, was often Conway um, 
puts a, puts a lien on your house for the amount of money for some number of years, you know, just we hope that you stay in Conway and don't, we don't fix the house and then you immediately sell it. So, um, but I, but I don't know how many years that's been typical for, um, because it doesn't happen that often. Um, well, typically, so, typically a lien is permanent. Uh, it's it's not for a particular number of years. The only time we did that was oh, so with, the, is, uh, oh, I see. with the yeah. congregational church with the community preservation funds. That was what I was thinking of. Yeah. 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 Um, I yeah. honestly don't care if it's a yep. lien or not. So but we did talk about whether it's what's what's appropriate and, when we were talking about whether to do a policy or not, which is my recollection, and what and who would construct the policy. And I thought it was going to be formed out to the personnel committee. And um, no, this has no, nothing to do with the personnel or whoever. But but, I, but this. It, it it is. I, I brought options, and the op, uh, options included a lien, or right. making it a loan. Um, you know, the lien could be paid back, could be paid off. You know, over time or not, and it would just stay with the house until you sold it. So whatever the house was sold for, this, this would be, price would be deducted and come back to the town. Understand that's how the right. lien would right. work. Right. Oh, yeah, that was that was the one. Yeah. So that, that is I mean, one of the options, the, and the, I, I hadn't this heard of the lien before. Make a make a blanket the statement on how they would that. do it. Yeah, so and, they, and then the like, like I got to thinking about this when um, the cabin occupied by Andrew and Amy burned down in uh, my my absence when we were in Maine, and um, I, you know, if the standard is make everybody make someone whole from a fire. Um, is is that the new standard? Do, do, you know what? How how long would a fund last if anybody that has a fire gets made whole from the town or from the fund? Well, this um, is meant to assist people who are in need. That is, who who don't have other means right, for covering it. Have insurance. insurance, for example, um, or other funds, and that's what, which is why we ask for. The information we ask for in the right. application. So it's, it's sort of an incentive to not carry insurance if it's not required. Um, only if you expect your house to be burnt down and the select board to maintain whatever policy it is, which well, if it's a lien on the house, isn't a very good. <laughs> no, but isn't I mean, a that's a very good way to do it. Yeah, I mean, the Guilford Fund is, has stipulations of how you qualify for it. I don't remember what those were. Want or distress. I know I can't get a occupancy permit until this electrical work's done. And I need to get back in my house. Yeah. So so the you know, if if if, if Gary says the it, it doesn't matter if there's a lien or not, um, I I would suggest making it possible for him to, you know, pay off the lien, but just say, Yeah, well we'll we'll give you this money and we'll put a lien on your house for this amount. And then that's um, then the town gets that back when the property is sold. Right. Yeah. And the house is worth you know a gigantic amount compared to this. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. Well, the it's, property it's, certainly. It's, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. More of the property than the yeah. house. Yeah. 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 And that sounds like a policy. That sounds like the beginnings of a policy. Well, that 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 is well, the so recommendation that I'm I'm prepared to make at this point. Um, a policy, you know, you guys are going to have to take my options and kick them around. But uh, no <laughs> well, one suggested that yet. So I think, um, you know, we're flexible. And, and since he says he's not, you know, opposed to a lien, I think that sounds like a really good way to go at this point. So, I mean, I think these look like reasonable amounts of money for the work that's got to get done. I am. And, I'm, and, I have and, no idea. And especially on, on, the, on the construction side of it, it felt like it was all clearly or, or easily damaged that was caused by the fire. And the other things about rewiring a, a you need a new light switch next to a door was, was less obvious to me, but it's all tiny stuff. So. Um, and, and he's saying there's not, an, either, there's other wiring that they say they can. That I'm sure got destroyed. No, he's saying that didn't. That there's some. Oh, oh, oh. I, it is possible that he can tie into some of the knob and tube. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's what was explained to me before. Yeah. Yeah. Which would not be optimal, but it's it makes it less expensive. Right. So I think what what this is is a lower lower cost. 
so I'm comfortable with these two. And I don't, I don't know whether you would rather have a policy. I mean, does, you know, you know, we're setting a precedent anyway, if not a policy. I mean, it's just it's awkward because we can't really talk about this in open meeting without like this being on the agenda and you being here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like we're talking about this like about what to do in a, in a way that must be kind of uncomfortable for you to witness, and I apologize for that. Um, but the uh, nature of public fine, business. Fine. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be public, sure. Um, but because I, I just I don't know any of this. I don't know nothing about this stuff. I yeah. really don't. This is just. Um, uh, so I would, I would just have to go with your judgment, I guess. I don't, um, well, I'm doing but, some siding on my house right now, and, all right. and I know what Clavert's cost. So, and there are a lot. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I would make approval contingent upon a lien being official and all that. I texted this dude last night, and I asked him if that included a new bulkhead, because, you know, the bulkhead is not good, but... Um, he said, nope, that's another six, seven hundred dollars. I'm like, I'll make one. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, and then, I mean, you know, should we get a report at the end of the thing to, that, that shows that the monies that were authorized were spent in accordance with the, the rules of the road or whatever? Uh, yeah, we would actually... Um, whatever that's called, an audit mm -hmm. or something, I don't know. Not an audit. Um, we can we can work out the details and and it could be that we would um, actually write the check to the uh, contractor Absolutely. and that would be contingent on the on the building inspector approving the yep. work. Mm -hmm. So that's that's uh, great. Yes. Again, I, yes. I mean, we yes, want you back in your house. house. Well. I mean, that's yeah. that is the important thing. Yeah. So. Okay. So. So, so I'll make a motion that we will accept these two estimates and that we will approve writing a check to these two contractors. And Jan will, or who, well, is it Jan who makes the lead? I, who, who, just, who, I can't wait too long to pay these guys. Yeah. The yeah. Work's done. Well, we're in the yeah. process of approving it right now. Right now. <laughs> so I understand what you said with the building inspector. Well, I was a month and a half trying to get him to the house. Yeah. We can't pay them till they've done the work. They get paid when they've done the work. Is that okay with that? Yeah. I think that'll be okay. Yeah. Okay. You were in the middle of. So, so, so I, I yeah the phrasing the phrasing of your motion you wanted to approve it subject to a lien can, subject to the lien and and uh, and approval by the building inspector. Okay. And payments made directly to the providers. Yeah. Like I said, it took a month and a half for me to get the building inspector to my house. So if it has to be approved by the building inspector before I pay these guys, they're not going to, that's not Well, we can go to them right away. Okay. Uh, and I can. And they can come to the, you know, just. I can um, see what I can do about expediting the inspector's work. That's true. A call from, if it's a not call from approved, a town. Who is the building? Who is the building? Approved, they'll come back. And who is the building inspector you worked with? Uh, is it uh, Dave Robert, Roberts. Robert. Uh, Roberts. Dave Roberts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll be working with Tom McDonald too, their electrical inspector. Yeah, I've met him once. Hmm. I mean, I know they have office hours in, in at Furcog. It's possible to go meet with them right in Furcog. That's what I had to do. <laughs> <laughs> for a yeah, I just didn't want to do too much, and um, but what's hard is getting cost the too much, and because the first contractor I spoke to, he wanted to do a lot more than this guy, so we got the building inspector there finally, and he went over it with us. So that's the hard piece is to get him to come to your house. Yeah. So that's done. Yep. So there's a motion pending. Okay. I'll second it. Let's vote. I'll say aye. Aye. That's so, that's about the most. The largest extent that we can put you out of your misery. <laughs> Good luck. Hope I feel better now. Thank so, you so much. So, so Lisa, do you think you got the motion? Okay. Yeah. So there's going to be my, a lien on my house for like uh, seventeen. Whatever these add up to. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Sure. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep in touch.
Take care. So some new business. Uh, do we have this? Do we have this letter? Of, it's in the. It should be in the yellow folder. You should have a copy of it too. in here. You yeah. should have copies of everything. You don't have um, copies of everything. I don't know if I printed out copies of those. I think I just no. Yes, yeah, certainly anything they sign in case they want to look at it. Keep their own. Uh, so here well, it it's pretty simple. Yeah, it's very straightforward. You 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 should certainly have gotten it in the email. We got it in the email. Yes, yes we so did. Uh, I'm all for that. Both of them were extremely short. Yes. Um, yeah. Supporting. Um, so this is the. the uh, so let's do the mass works first. The ma I didn't sign it yet. Uh, I mean, let's do the uh, highway first. So this is the highway. I'm here for yeah, good. Oh, great. Good. Any, any, uh, yes, we're on highway. Letter of support for Mass Work Grant for reclaiming a new pavement for Sheldon Falls Road. <clears throat> so, um, we actually may be changing it a little bit from reclaiming to milling to try to get a further distance out of it, but that shouldn't really make a... So it doesn't affect what we're signing here at all? Uh, not sure what uh, uh, written uh, down. Here it just says a Mass Works Grant under the category of small town rural assistance for road work. And that still covers it's good. it. Yep. Yeah. So changing from milling to reclaiming? No. Other way around. Other way around. We're just trying to get as much out of the money as we can. And if we reclaim it, it's be a it's a better job or a better, better longevity. Use of the material. Longevity out of the work. So it'll be uh, another pile up behind the new town garage. Mm -hmm. At by milling, yes. The, it's, it's actually a benefit to the town for the material that we take out of there. You know, because so you, you get to use it later right, in a project of your choice, rather but than yeah. reclaiming it, it is yeah. actually better for the base, but it costs more. It's more money and trying to make everything work dollar wise and get the most out of our buck. Um, the milling actually is looking like a better way to go with it. So What's the difference cool. in lifespan of the road? Well, when you reclaim it, you're actually putting the road, you're leaving the road there. It's just getting ground up. So you're actually adding to your base. Mm -hmm. So the surface gets ground, ground yes, down the into the base. Yes, the surface gets ground in. Yeah. And then you put a new surface over the top. Milling, you take off some of the existing and just put new back on the top. So we've been having trouble with frost thieves there or anything that would make reclaiming, make the road uh, last another five or ten years? Not necessarily, because a lot of the frost thieves are caused from culvert pipes and things like that. And one of the biggest problems is with culvert pipes is they're generally not deep enough, which mm. was what creates, because a pipe doesn't move, mm. the road moves, comes up on either side. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, which is what generally creates a frost heap on a culvert pipe. So is this mostly the stretch of road that goes up the hill and... It's, it's from the center of town to just past Hart Road, 30,000 uh -huh. feet is what I'm looking to do. That way everything is fairly recent mm. at that point. I know people complain about it, but it's still so much better than what happens on that road as soon as you get to the Buckland town size. Yes, and we <laughs> don't ever want to be there. Different problem. <laughs> yes. We do not want to be there. <laughs> So, so, so what, what is the difference in, in lifespan? I, you know, I, I hear, well, it's not going to be as good. I want to know. Uh, well, base makes a big difference. I mean, and the road isn't like... Um, Buckland. Hmm? Like Buckland. Yeah. I mean, there's, they just haven't done nothing. In, I mean, since what, the 70s, I think, is when that road was done. But it, it's, each road is different. It depends on... That road actually has a fairly decent base. There's a few spots that we're probably going to add some stuff to or, you know, do some re different stuff to it to help the bad spots. But one of the biggest problems with the road is the shade. I mean, right, it's the shade from the hill. The, the old hill is yes. one of the 
biggest problems with that room. Yes. Um, so Sorry, I got I got an even more stupid question. That sure. This is really stupid. So when I go go I go through town like um, Waitley, the North Street, um, which is like they, they put up signs every summer, oil oil spray. So it's not a dirt road. It's not a paved road. It's something in between. It's oil and stone. Oil and stone. But it's, is that is that like really cheap? And can you get a lot of roads paid like oil stone for the same amount? Like I. To me, that's a perfectly good drive, but I have a pickup truck. It's got a life expectancy of five to six years when oil and stone, so it's not, there's no structure to the, it's just stone glued with oil. That's what we had on Hoosick Road, I think, for a while. No, well, the, that never was. I mean, most all the roads so, in town 25 years ago were oil and stone. Right, right. Uh, Rowan Brook is oil and stone. Um, not many left anymore because it it's too expensive to. Um, it doesn't do anything for the base. It it's a sealer. It's basically what it is. I'm actually considering doing a rubberized chip seal for all the roads that we paved in the last three or four years, just to um, seal it, basically instead of putting another because. Block top so expensive that I mean we some towns use it a lot of towns don't because it doesn't last and if you have a lot of roads and you start using it pretty quick then all your roads are to the point where they all need a lot of work um, it's the chip seal yeah I mean it doesn't have a big life expectancy because it's just a thin layer of stone and oil well, you're talking about oil and stone. Right? You're yeah, putting right. that back oh, on right. top chip, chip seal, and the only difference with chip seal, it's rubberized now. In the last few years, they've been adding rubber to it. Oil and stone is old-fashioned. Um, chip seal, rubberized chip seal, has got rubber added to it to give it flexibility. Um, but it's still just a thin layer of 3-8 stone or whatever size stone they use in it, generally it's 3 8 by oh, 16. okay, so it's just a top seal for, for the Correct. road. So would you, would you be doing that to Shelburne Falls no. Road after doing no. this? No. No, I, I'm the one that brought it up because I, I, I was just wondering. Yeah. Like, no, well that just, road's too high of traffic. It, it would wear it fast. I mean, like I said, it's only the thickness of the stone that they lay down, which is 5 16 or 3 8 and just some oil or synthetic stuff now but with a little bit of rubber in it um, something like that road it's too highly traveled to really have any life expectancy out of it um, the rubber is kind of new so to know really what's going on with it maybe maybe down the road it wouldn't hurt to put a coat on it to seal it frost really does a huge mm. lot of damage to our roads and you know, with the cracking of the blacktop and stuff. So maybe, maybe something like that would. For that section of shovel from on Dill Hill. Oh, I know. It's, it's nasty. It, it, yeah, and, and, and it's, it's almost like Buckland. It almost mm -hmm. is. It's getting there. Yeah. yeah. So and it's just that one section right yeah. there where it is right. being shaded. Yeah. So we're hoping to. <clears throat> we so thanks. Applied, for, thanks for the lesson. We <laughs> we applied last year for this grant, and didn't get it. So we're hoping that maybe I try again and see what we can. And there's a chance we'll get it. Sometimes I mean, you have to try. Because we didn't get it last four year. Times right. we'll, we'll be higher up on the list. Yeah. You get something. When I they hope. see something year after year, they, it, it means something. Well, we try. I mean, they, they the only, I think there was only two or three in um, Western Mass that got any sizable so grant. We have signed it for you. Perfect. Well, you so, haven't so, taken the vote yet. Okay. And you didn't sign this one. We didn't sign this one at all. All right. Well, you haven't. So, so let's take a vote. So, okay. so, so I, I'm going to make a motion that we sign both of these. I'll well, can we do them one at a time? Okay. Right. I'll make a motion that we will sign Ron's MassWorks grant uh, in support of Mass, the MassWorks grant that Ron's applying for, for milling or reclaiming the road. Likely mill. Shelburne, Shelburne Falls. Shelburne Falls Road. Doesn't say Shelburne Falls Road on here. Yeah, well, so that's the happy container, the finalist in this year's grant. 
So I'll make that motion. There's many other applicants yes. that wish to be finalists next year. You moved it. So we got we got a yeah, second. No, I, I, okay. Aye. All in favor? Yes, aye, yes. aye. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So do you take this or is yeah, make a copy or, or find one from? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's good. Perfect. Yeah. Make sure we get a copy too. Yep. And I got to talk to you about it, and I got a couple questions on the application. But yeah, okay. we're pretty close to being done. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. A Thank good you. lesson. Thanks for coming in and explaining. Okay. And we have the same thing for Joe's uh, downtown sewage project. Same, yes. si same situation, different section of the grant. It requires an economic development rationale. Ours, like most small towns, isn't as strong as some of the larger towns. We're structurally disadvantaged, but we should keep applying anyway. It does feel like we should have a good argument because we will never attract somebody, a business to the town. The metrics sewage. for this grant program favor the town. It's just like all the housing stuff, everything else. If you, um, yeah, if, if you don't have a private partner already, it's difficult Mm. to move forward. Somebody the, in particular. Yes. yes. It's it's extraordinarily um, difficult to do basic infrastructure with the program, which is what it was originally intended to do. So um, that uh, is a, a problem, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't keep applying and let them know that there are these needs. Yeah. And hats off to Joe for doing the work. Absolutely. Yeah. So I will make a motion that we that we sign this letter in support? Second. Yes. And all in favor, aye. Yes. Great. Do you take this one? Yeah. So the last one was was that we received a letter from NetSamp. No, we need to skip one. Highway letter, wastewater, oh, letter of support for, oh, for the MassWorks grant for uh, Ashfield's application for for their dam work. And again, they're trying the to dam pitch repair. it as an economic development project. Uh, they did not get it last year, and... They got a $750,000 oh. appropriation in the state budget. Oh, that was a separate appropriation, okay, yeah. Well, they're trying for a grant, too. I'm not signing this. You can. Really? Because of their appropriation? They or? got a $750,000. they have never had this. They got ordered by the state to put this on town meeting. They, they, I could go on and on about this. They've received the benefit of tax revenue for making this problem worse. They, I mean, on and on and on. They got $750,000 to fix it. And I want to do grants for Conway, not grants for Ashfield. And I'll be willing to sit down with them and talk about this stuff. But I'm not signing this absent a conversation and a knowledge what the town of Ashfield is doing. If this is their only plan to get the rest of the money to get the job done, um, it, whatever. This is not, it, I, I, I don't have enough information to sign it. Uh, from what I know now, I'm not comfortable at all signing it. So I'm going to propose that we're not going to get a second for my motion. <laughs> That we're going to be able to sign so this. So you should right. probably table and it. So I think we'll just table this, yes. So I'll table this and we'll look at it in the future. Okay. So do you want to talk about the next amp letter? I mean, it's not something that we have to sign. It's I think you are probably better equipped to talk about it than I am. You've been working on the project with the Conservation Commission. And, well, uh, and, and what I know is we made an offer to them, for a proposal for a pilot, and they've come back with their counteroffer, which is uh, you know going to go to our, our negotiator, the uh, uh, counsel for the assessors, Roy Bishop, and uh, he's the professional that they've hired to run the town's negotiations for it. So there's not a heck of a lot to discuss, except you know they did come back with a counteroffer with all kinds of points that they made regarding our offer. And saying a lot of very nice things about how far we're, how we got to where we are, um, and and the only other thing that is informative is that in the midst of all of this, the state is finally talking about redoing the smart program, 
which is what's going to increase the allocation, which is what causes this project to be on hold. And so if the state increases their allocation, then they will be able to proceed. And in the midst of that, the state is looking at other changes to the SMART program, which is the Solar Incentive Program, one of it, which is more than just lowering the incentive payments for projects that involve cutting down trees, but disallowing projects that involve cutting down trees. And it's not clear the state is going to do that, but if they do that... DP very much wants the state to do that. I do. I did have. I shared a shared a campground with a high DEP official. In <laughs> oh Maine, no! And this came, this stuff came up. Yeah. Clear cutting for solar. Yeah. And, and regulations to limit the amount of trees being cut. Um. And, so yes. Yeah, so and I thought that was really cheeky coming from the state that just lowered pilot payments and where all of our towns are half state forest, and on the one hand they say. We're not going to pay you as much for the, for our state forests, and on the other hand, they say, "Don't touch the trees," and um, like I'd be inclined to touch the trees, but again, um, right? This is not lowered uh, pilot payments, but the state lowered the requirements for how cleanly you have to burn wood in order to qualify for renewable energy credits which will allow you to burn wood in a very dirty fashion yeah, the and they will still qualify for RECs, renewable energy That's a energy separate thing credits. from the pilot. No, it has nothing thing. to do with pilot. Right. It has nothing to do with taxes. Right. They did lower the amount that they reimburse towns under the under their all their pilot agreements for state forests. Yes. That's what that's I was referring a different, to. Different program. Right, but, but the state is also encouraging the burning of wood for creating electricity. Yes. And that is of questionable greenness. And, and, and perhaps worse, if that state program gets enacted, it means that our electric utilities and our rates, our electric bills, will be funding the wood burning plants in New Hampshire and in Maine. Because they are within our New England region and their wood burning plants will then qualify despite the fact they are incredibly dirty. They will qualify for renewable energy credits that will be purchased by our utilities. And yes, and so it seems disingenuous for the state to say we desperately need to protect trees to the extent that we won't allow solar to be the cause of cutting down trees. So, but they are, the state is getting a lot of support for preserving forests. Yeah. So that's what this is about. So. All right. Okay. So was the next amp letter something that we just didn't need to comment on, or? No, just just it's a general discussion, and and uh, you know, I just well, did, well, did just say no. Just say no to counter offers. Stick to the stick to your offer. We sent a letter to them requesting our pilot a pilot amount, and they sent the letter back saying they'd like to give us less. So, so, so it's the beginning and, of negotiations. So it's expected. We, we we are not expecting. We we don't have to vote on that. We just it's knowledge, and uh, and Lee and and her consultant are going to continue the negotiation. And at some point, we will have to approve. Um, and at some point, it would be great to have Lee and our consultant come in and we can talk about Well, they will come in what, when, when, we're, when they ask right. us to approve it. Right, so, what will happen? Can I ask we, that we keep this in the sort of the file so that when we look at the next stage of this, we'll have sort of this as the history to remind us of what... When yeah, we, sure. Yeah. Tom, and, and, Tom sent that to us in the and, mail. And so you should have it in your email. email. I, I, well. I understand. I, I just got back. Yeah, yeah I know. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You have that in your mail. I just yeah. printed it out uh, just to make sure we had a copy. Okay. Items not anticipated 48 hours in advance. So right. I just uh, I just saw the thing about closing out uh, accountant deciding to do something different and closing out accounts in fiscal year with a whole list of all these different accounts. Is that going to be part of your update? Um, we uh, no, we don't we don't have to do anything about that now. Um, I. I, I, it will be part of my update. All right. I shall yeah. wait with for your update and then inquire following yeah. your update. It, it, you know, yeah. It, I, I thought it might it, be. It's something for a future agenda. 
as, especially the the select board ones. There, there, are, a lot of it's just cleanup of of stuff that's minor and, and doesn't, I think, rise to that level. But there are definitely a couple of things that are the select of select board interest in those. Well, and, to and respond and would can, be to betray my question that I was intending oh, to okay. wait right. upon oh, yeah, yeah. after you. Good, okay. good, good. Okay. Good. okay. So I don't have anything. So we'll do it then. Yeah. So uh, here's the update. Okay. So that's it. So the update. now your update. There we go. Uh, in committee work, um, the Parks, Recreation, and Trails Committee is planning to install a much-needed new shed near the ball field, tentatively set for Monday, August 12th. We are waiting for DEP clearance and some final paperwork to file with the Registry of Deeds and the Conservation Commission before the plans are finalized. In departmental news, uh, based on an earlier conversation, I have looked into our septic loan rates and can report that we charge 5%, much less than the 15% we had feared. Uh, the bank's fairly nominal administrative fee is on top of that as well, but it is quite minimal. What are, what are we, septic loans? We, we, that's, that's we, the we could change the percentage, but it does not seem to be an unreasonable amount. What's the name no. of the program that we're talking about? The septic loan repair program. We, oh, no, we, we have a... Fund. So when like somebody goes to sell fund. their house and there's we, we have, we have, to be we have two on. funds. There are two funds that are administered by the Franklin Regional Housing Redevelopment Authority. There's another word in there, but um, uh, and one of them is for repairing septic systems. The other is for housing rehabilitation, which is a community development block grant program. This is a program that started up a while ago, and um, we're we're just about to be sort of flying solo on it. We've 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 gone through the initial amount, um, and that that we were sort of holding as the result of a grant, and and uh, after this year or after last year, I forget whether this year or next year is the first, but we'll we'll be um, it'll be entirely our funds. Uh, but we do have to use it for septic loan repair, and it's a revolving fund. Do you so, know how many we normally do a year? Um, I don't. It's mm -hmm. not many per year, mm -hmm. um, and it is a loan fund. Um, but, uh, yeah, we don't charge as much as, as uh, we feared we might. And we do have control over the percentage. Uh, our treasurer feels that five percent is a reasonable fee to charge for that. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's once upon a time there, there, there can be further discussion right. about that, but uh -huh. it yeah. should be with the treasurer. Great. Um, yeah, we thought there, we thought it was fifteen. Yeah. And, and it's not. Please report good. that it's five. Great. Um, there is moderately good news regarding state aid. According to the conference committee figures, and now, since I actually wrote this, the governor signed the budget, uh, we're scheduled to get um, 13931 more in estimated receipts than we planned from the initial governor's budget, as outlined, and uh, we're going to be charged $28,234 less than in the governor's budget. Together, this means we're getting 42165 more in state aid than anticipated. Mm -hmm. Or at least um, that's how it'll appear on the uh, in our budget. So we're we're very well set. It's it's all in our favor. And what do we charge for? Is that things like charter schools or yeah. school choice things like yeah. that? Um, uh, I've submitted our updates to Maya for FY 2020. The administrative assessor requested the personal property value for the town hall be increased as there is more equipment there and some newer items such as their copier. Uh, since the values are not very different, I do not anticipate that this will increase our premium by very much. In any case, we'll have enough in the, in the budget to cover it. Um, I have yet to hear back from Maya about the additional, I just gave them a, a property list and they'll probably say, you know, whatever we're charging you, we'll cover it or there'll be like a hundred bucks more, you know, to cover it, something like that. Uh, we are also down one vehicle as the police cruiser was given to the fire department and the existing fire department vehicle was traded in. So they may give us a break on that as well. So, But we bought a new police cruiser. 
Okay. Yes, but it was replacing one that we already had. So, so we um, bought it. So we buy the copier, and our premium goes up. That's it. I, 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 I don't I, I, know I, I, that it will. And if it does, it'll go up by a, a nominal amount. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, based, you know, we have a whole lot of things that we insure. When we're making so, those lease versus purchase decisions, though, there's always extraneous factors that we um, don't consider at the time. I, I think the, the, the point is that I informed them about all of the relevant equipment that we do have so that if there is a meteorite that hits mm -hmm. um, the town hall, we will get it all replaced. Um, uh, Chief Baker, John O'Rourke, and I met with our counterparts in Ashfield who were wondering whether the two departments might work more closely in the future. The departments will consider the idea in the months to come. These are fire departments. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't have, I don't expect to have when, anything. When this was raised a couple weeks ago, I thought the, uh, the purpose of the meeting was to form an agenda for the select boards to meet um, about this issue. Yeah, we're not ready for that yet. <laughs> so we're, it's going very slowly. I'll put that it sounds out. like Ash. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the local designers working on both highway facility projects are sufficiently busy that they do not feel they can work on a design for a new town hall lift. Mm. Nor can Peter Jeswald. So I'm looking for other designers who might be able to do the job. Mm. Um, and I actually uh, will be uh, meeting with both of them uh, within the month. That was my floor of um, town meeting and recruitment getting request, recruitment attempt. Um, mm -hmm. to, get, to get them to do Remember it? Remember at the town meeting, I said, if you could, well, can't you guys just take over the, the town hall lift? Yeah. And so uh, I tried. I tried. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, as I wrote in an email on Thursday, I would like to place on the agenda at a future meeting discussion, discussion regarding a couple of ongoing accounts especially 122, 5800 elderly housing. The 122 means it's a select board account. Uh, elderly housing, there's $475 in that, and 122, 5850, the Batchelder property. It's, it's the small piece um, just near the South River Bridge, which has $2,000 in it, to see whether those can go back to the general fund. Um, those opportunities which, for which they were created may have passed, but because they were started before I started work here, I need some direction from the board to help decide whether they need to stay on the books. This is partly the result of a financial team meeting that every year we go over the special revenue accounts and say, you know, is this one moving? Does this one have a purpose? You know, can we close it out? And a whole bunch of, you know, special town meeting articles that have fulfilled the purpose of what they meant to fund, but there's a few hundred dollars left in them something like that. We usually kick them back to the general fund. To check in with the department head, kick it back to the general fund. So you guys are the department head for especially these two, and they, these especially, um, do we keep them? Do they stay or do they go? Should we put Sorry. language in the warrant articles to not determine what to do with excess money? I, I have a story and a couple questions about this. So, uh, well, let, let, yeah, me, let okay. me just get rid of the, the last okay. one here because it's kind of weird. Um, a man came into the office last week who did not identify himself and asked for John O'Rourke, town council. Hmm. Uh, don't know whether he meant lawyer or he was confusing the select board with a, a town council. Uh, with three first pages of papers, he said, proved carbon dioxide was not responsible for global warming. Oh, yeah. A few minutes, a few minutes of searching the Internet showed them not to be legitimate. You're welcome to see them and what I found, if you like. So I just thought I would mention that because a fellow came in on public business and asked... It's more fun when they identify themselves. ...presented to the select board. And he asked that we keep those somehow? I mean, no, he just said he, he, he wanted them to be shared with the select board, so... Hmm. Um, I'm offering to share them with you if you uh, are I'd interested. love to see them. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, so, yes. Okay. So, so, this, uh, so, finished with the town administrator update, concerns or perspectives or stories from... There you go. Stories from the select There board. you go. I know that's how you like this thing. It's a midrash. There you go. Cool. See, see well, that was impressive. That was good. Yeah. That was good. Um, all right. So... Uh, this so, so it, I sort of go back to when we were forming the committee earlier this year to f fill out the 
paperwork and uh, identify so the $30,000 Conway Grammar School grant <clears throat> that came from the state. And it involved prioritizing uh, the uh, building, uh, the, the building people for the school. Um, uh, and, and because at that, uh, and in, in particular, there was outstanding work that was authorized and paid for by successive town meeting votes that hasn't occurred yet. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, the school, if there are outstanding accounts like that, um, somebody should contact our town accountant right away because he's requesting encumbrance forms for things that need to be um, held over. My, my recollection is that they had the, that they had the con that superintendent called and you weren't here and that he spoke to Jan. Okay, that's um, good. That's very good about this. But that this was some months ago. Oh, okay. And that at the time Jan had a sh had had said that it's okay to hold these accounts open. Um, yeah, that, and, but I'm paraphrasing, and I might really and, be inaccurate about and, this. And, so and I, I got I, this wrong. I'm sorry. I, and and I do need to follow up on that because there's new information since then. Um, about the way our accountant prefers to handle things. So, so, so what I was getting at is that, um, w based on the, the the sense that it, that that money would still be available in the near future, um, without having to go to town meeting for it again, yeah. we made the decision to put the building, uh, the uh, uh, ma building manager, whatever his title is, I forget. Jesus, um, uh, that, that to put him to work on. Prioritizing the work that we can get with the grant, and it's already and, paid for. Uh, and, and, oh, oh, the thirty thousand was a grant. Yes. Oh, that's different. Okay. Good. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, so, but, but we, but it was like either we can use him to make our grant application really good, or we can use him to do a couple of the projects that, uh, the little projects that were paid for it, and and they called, and it's like that that money will still be there to do those little projects that were authorized. Um, so let's work on the grant. So that's what we did, and um, uh, so you know we, that that's kind of like important that they don't have to go back to town meeting yeah. and do that again. Yeah, no, if it's grant funded, that's that's that it's, puts it in a different category. It's not grant funded. Yeah. We're oh. not. I, I'm, I confused you because I'm referring to the reason why they called was because we are working on a grant. The 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 accounts in question are town meeting votes Oops. on specific projects, those lists that, 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 that the school would do um, for specific items to be funded outside of the regular budget. There would be another article with like four or five projects. We didn't do it this past year, but we did it right. each. Okay. So it's those, yeah. it's those articles, and it might be from two years, and, maybe even and three years. And our town accountant should get an email saying, please don't spend that money. Yeah, and... Um, and they might need help getting that email. If I could ask you to like, because there's a new finance director, there's a new building manager now, everybody involved in it except for the superintendent right. I, and the principal I, are I, new. I need to know which articles. Yeah, so it, the it, superintendent might know that, it's, but. It's um, being a little vague. If, can, can you at least. So you need, to, you need to encumber the money. Right. So it doesn't get used elsewhere. Right, all I know now is that it, sometime in the past, Years two, would be two helpful. and three years ago, the 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 articles for the special, I mean, they're special requests, but they're they're itemized itemized yeah. items. Yeah, that that's that's no longer going to cut it with our with our accountant. We we need to let him know right well, that we want to. They were the specific, and I forget the article numbers. It's two and yeah. three years ago, but they're sp and, and it was four, five, six specific projects with a specific price tag that were authorized to be paid out of capital out of. Capital stabilization, ca grammar school, ca yeah. grammar school yeah. stabilization, and it was thirty thousand. No, the thirty thousand was the grant that oh. we were applying for. That was the reason we made these inquiries. We did, ignore the grant thing; yeah. that got you okay. thrown off. Okay. Um, so, the, I think the one the one year might have been twenty three thousand, maybe two years ago. The year before that might have been like thirty one or thirty five thousand. Okay, that helps. Okay, that's good. But they're and, the only, and, they, and they were both from capital stabilization. They're both from capital okay. grammar that, school. Grammar school yeah, yeah, stabilization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's and fine. That's they were fine. both a, a, a list of specific items, and the superintendent might know, you know, but they, it, it's 
this is the stuff that we got to get Shelly, the new business manager, up to speed on. You, we got to get the new biz, building facilities guy yeah. up. To, that's the title. That's building the, facilities that's what you're manager. For. Um, and there's such a there's such a transition there in terms of the people that deal with this kind of stuff that I'm worried it's going to get lost in the cracks. Oh, it is definitely about to get lost in the cracks. See? And and it's uh, yeah. So good. Yes. Thank you. So I will do that. Thank I'll you. Take care of that. So that was my story and my questions. Those are your concerns of the selectmen. There you go. Stories. Mail. <clears throat> it's always exciting to read mail for the first time. We have a letter from Furcog about the Roaring Brook Camp. Maybe you could read the first paragraph or something. I, I guess so. It says, we have received your inquiry about having a sign located at Roaring Brook Camp. And this is to? So this is this is to Pastor Rivera. Of the, of the camp. Okay, yes. Uh, according to Conway Zoning Bylaws, Section 33.1, the maximum size allowed for an on-premises sign is 15 square feet, and they're looking for 24 square feet. And they refer to the ZBA? In order for okay. your sign to be permitted, I must direct you to the Conway Zoning Board of Appeals, the ZBA, to apply for a variance. And they actually so, apply to the town clerk if anyone ever asks you. So this is the firm is on the website. Is, is recommending the application that. goes to the town clerk. She forwards it to the ZBA. I like our zoning laws. If anybody wants a variance, they can do their own legal work. Well, that, so they also have to apply for a sign. Nobody's suggesting we do legal work. Yes, I know. You know what I mean. <laughs> so this and this is uh, from Jim Hawkins, the uh, building commissioner. Yes. So you're aware that that's going on. So this is the next half letter that we talked about. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. That, that's good. Yep. That's done. And and another uh, a letter of complaint from Winston Burt. And let me summarize it for you, if I may. Uh, please, please do read it. Um, uh, at some point. Um, uh, as you know, he's had, uh, he's been complaining about a neighbor's uh, noisy geese, which um, apparently can make extraordinary noises. And uh, we're still trying to get the town's administrative process in gear. Um, the Chair of the Agricultural Commission offered him a meeting because they're supposed to have a, a hearing to help try to resolve the dispute. And uh, because of something the chair had written him earlier, the the <coughs> fellow said that he didn't he didn't think that the chair would be a neutral um, facilitator. Um, John O'Rourke offered to be the neutral facilitator in a phone conversation. Um, no, he didn't offer in a phone conversation. He offered to be a neutral facilitator. In a phone conversation that the chair had with the uh, complainant, um, the complainant said, well, I don't know him, but, you know, maybe maybe it would be, maybe it would work out. They were unable to settle on a date. They were unable to schedule a date. Um, in the meantime, the chair of the Ag Commission um, has found it... Uh, increasingly difficult to keep up with his his obligations as chair, uh, which he has actually for the last year, um, but he's but they haven't had much cause to meet. Uh, so he actually has informed me of his intention to resign at some point, and what I've asked him to do is to convene a meeting of the Agricultural Commission for the purpose of choosing a new chair and try to reorganize the committee and get it set up before he resigns. Um, in order to have that be, you know, but he didn't more chair orderly. be able to and, and begin this again, perhaps on a well, well, stronger we, footing. We still have to go through the town's administrative process, which yes. is which is having having, you know, a hearing before the agriculture commission. Yes. So why didn't so then the agriculture commission's? Well, a meeting was scheduled, and uh, the complainant could not make it and um, requested that it be postponed. And then there was a question about the 
or before that even throughout there's been a question about the chair's neutrality whose question this guy uh, the, the complainant's the, yeah. question yeah. yeah so that's not that's not for anybody in the select board to jump to the cl complainants no 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 uh, he, but he's writing the select board because the process has not been moving along and i'm letting you know that this is what's been going on and I would like to write this guy back on behalf of the board and say, here's what's been going on. We're, we're struggling to reconstitute the Agriculture Commission. Um, the chair will be leaving. Uh, we hope that this is going to happen before the, the end of the summer. At that point, we'll have a new chair, and we, we hope very much to, to get this hearing done as, as quickly as we can. Yeah. Tom, I should, um, in case you haven't heard, um, they're having a meeting. The Ag Commission is having a meeting next Monday. Monday, okay. So Great. they have scheduled one for yeah. this for this to take place. That's excellent. With, with over this complaint? With, no, with no. Oh, just just, just, just to find a new chair. Yes, excellent. Um, which and then uh, there there is an all-purpose clause in the Mass State Laws that the Select Board can take original jurisdiction of anything to do with health and safety in a town and have their own hearing. Uh, the Select Board can take. Uh, take responsibility for any appointed uh, board um, committee or commission so why don't we get one if, if it doesn't have uh, I, if, if it doesn't um, exist which is why Bob moved on to the conservation commission as so, a kind so, of why, so why doesn't the select board just take since the, that cultural is either unwilling or well uh, because it, it, it's going through its process of reorganizing and and our bylaws say it's the Ag Commission, and if, if they're moving forward, I haven't know, heard unwilling. It, 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 well, it doesn't sound yeah, like they're moving and, forward. And they're, they're, they're moving. Unwilling. They're moving into uncertainty. Is where is the forward direction that they're moving into? No, they they have they have to have the hearing because that's in our bylaws. Um, so they're reorganizing, um, and and they they did propose a, a date. Yeah, and the complainant himself um, was unable to make that. So. Um, you know, it's not like they haven't been, you know, working in good faith. It feels to me it's in, it's in the complainant's interest to get this process over with. Oh, absolutely, so. and 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 it's 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 too bad that there's been, you know, a lot of it happened over the summer, and the ag commission being people who were involved to some degree in agriculture, uh, most of them, um, they've been very busy. This is their busy season, so it's hard to schedule. Did you send us a copy of this, or is this, uh, I don't know if um, it's appropriate. I don't know that I did, but uh, um, I don't remember I, seeing I, it. I certainly can. So you know, I would just say yeah. to anybody that has any kind of complaint with any town agency or any dealings, don't, don't send, don't impugn the integrity and the motives of the volunteers that do good work on behalf of the town. Just don't. So, yeah. Everyone does try to do their best. Right. And just because it doesn't work out the way somebody says, wishes that it would, doesn't mean that somebody is a bad person. No. You don't have any mistakes. There's I've a long series mistakes. of reasons why mistrust got built up here. So maybe with a new chair, or maybe with starting over again, it'll go better. That'll be great. And it's very unfortunate that it has dragged on so long. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes things take longer than they ought to, especially in small towns. Announcements. I have none. Next meeting. So we have the next meeting scheduled for Monday, August 19th. Right here. Yeah. And so now we're going to go into executive session. Mm -hmm. So we will do the second first. So you have to move Ooh, and, and you have to move. Uh, so that we to to adjourn immediately to, thereafter. To, to adjourn from open session immediately for these two reasons. Directly out of executive session, right? So, I move I, I move that we go into executive session, and we have for for the two statutory reasons: number one, to consider the purchase of the real property at 33 Main Street; and number two, to comply with the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. Yep. Number seven. Yeah, reason number seven. Yes. Yeah. So and, uh, and then to and so and then so to adjourn directly after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you say yes. Yes. Bob, I say yes. So we're in executive session. 
Excellent.